Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet is one of the best known love stories of all time. As a play, it offers a commanding insight into the bond between the lover and the beloved. The play opens with a prophetic prologue. The drama rises into the astonishing tenderness and intimacy of the lovers, then descends into the underworld of their trials and ends with their deaths. Yet without fate, their union was unlikely. They are too young for such passion, too constrained by family and the enmity of their houses, too different in nature. Nevertheless, in their inevitable meeting, they claim each other instantly in a flame of mutual recognition and after uniting, immediately vanish into death. Nothing is left of the lover's poetry for the beloved but words. The stage is empty as was foretold. Yet Romeo and Juliet are fulfilled. Their union of love ends in death and they vanish into a realm we cannot see. Romeo and Juliet is a play about love and a play about death. These themes are so strongly expressed in the play that it invites you to consider other themes. There are four main themes to look at. The first being foreshadowing, the second recognition, the third love and death, and the fourth transformation. But these are not the only themes in the play. Shakespeare packs the play with meaning. Juliet's name comes from the Yu Li family, who were descended from Aeneas, the son of Aphrodite, the goddess of love. Romeo is a version of the city of Rome, and Aeneas was the founder of Rome in mythology. So in a way, Shakespeare is saying that these two names are one and the same, both originating from love. In the first theme of foreshadowing, the characters know that something momentous is about to happen. Throughout the play, both Romeo and Juliet sense the future. Romeo says early on in the play to his friend Mercutio, my mind misgives some consequence yet hanging in the stars. In this painting, the young Christ, working in his father's workshop, experiences a state of ecstasy. To the lower left, his companion, a woman in green, sees what will happen to him, his shadow on the wall crucified on the horizontal bar, the nails and the wooden shelf behind him, his head almost perfectly encircled like a halo the star above his head, and to the lower right, a red headscarf that resembles the crown of thorns he will be wearing. Jerome's painting Jerusalem also uses shadow to symbolize the crucifixion, a painting of Juliet, young, beautiful, serious, looking up from her balcony. Romeo and Juliet first see each other at a masked ball, and although they're both wearing masks, they instantly recognize each other. When Romeo finds out that Juliet is a Capulet, he says, O oh dear account, my life is my foe's debt. And when Juliet discovers that Romeo is a Montague, she says, My only love sprung from my only hate. In this theme of recognition, 
one sees one's higher self for the first time and understands this to be the real you. In this painting by Rossetti, two lovers meet their exact duplicates. With one couple, there is a halo. With the other, the man has drawn his sword and the woman is fainting from this encounter with something far more real. In this painting, this idea is expressed very beautifully, where the painter is observing the model asleep, and in his painting, we see the model awake. Here, Tiepolo expresses this idea in another way. Alexander the Great commissions a painting of his mistress. In the course of the painting, the artist falls in love with her. And you may think that Alexander would not react too well to this situation. But when he sees the quality of the painting, the love and adoration expressed in the portrait, he understands what's happened. The artist has fallen in love with his mistress and he gives her as a gift to the painter. Here it looks as though the woman just about to enter into the room is the same as the woman sitting on the divan. They're both smiling, a private sense of themselves, and above the bed is a mirror. This recognition of something higher has its own timing, and sometimes it is appropriate, and sometimes it is not. In this painting, King Candelas has boastfully told his bodyguard, Gyges, that his wife is the most beautiful woman in the world and that his bodyguard should watch her undressing that night. Gyges does not like the idea, thinking it disrespectful. But the king insists. And as the king's wife takes off her clothes, she senses someone else in the room, turns, and sees that Gyges is spying on her. And in a twist, which is the real meaning of this story, she goes to Gyges and tells him that because he has seen what should not be seen, he must take the life of the king and become the king himself, which Gyges does. So higher emotional center, one's real self, remains veiled until it is time for it to be unveiled. Romeo and Juliet immediately recognize each other, see each other directly and deeply, even though they are both wearing masks. Once Romeo and Juliet are married, the play descends into the Amduat of death. Again, both Romeo and Juliet sense their coming death. Romeo says, I dreamt my lady came and found me dead. Strange dream that gives a dead man leave to think. As Romeo leaves after their first night together, she calls down to him, Methinks I see thee, now thou art below, as one dead in the bottom of a tomb. Juliet is more prepared for death. She feigns her own death so that she can be laid in a corpse-like state in the tomb where it's planned Romeo will find and revive her. She goes through death twice. In the final theme of transformation, this painting by William Blake was taken from a verse in Romeo and Juliet where after the first night, the lovers spend together as man and wife. Romeo says, Night's candles are burnt out, and jocund day stands tiptoe on the misty mountain tops. I must be gone and live, or stay and die. Blake's painting shows the transfigured Romeo and in this painting by Nicholas Hilliard of his wife Alice, there is hardly anything left of her 
physical form except for her eyes and a small enigmatic smile, a true selfless portrait. From the Song of Solomon Set me as a seal upon your heart, as a seal upon your arm, for love is as strong as death, passion as cruel as the grave.